Good morning, folks. Right across here, BJ South Door. Hey, we're down here on the Tennessee River. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Uh, the river's rough. You probably can't see it from here. Uh, this side ain't too bad. I'm on the south side of the river. But on the other side, man, where I want to fish this area, it is rough. And uh, can't drag, can't sit still. So we're gonna do a bank trip today. I've been wanting to do one for a long time. Man, I really love the bank fish. Uh, hadn't done it in, you know, in years. Uh, main thing in my area is uh pressure man there's so many people fishing from the bank you know uh and it really ain't pressuring the fish because you know you're kind of confined to one area but uh it's just you go to a spot somebody's there you know you go to another spot somebody's there it's just always somebody there uh, and of course this spot i did get to in a boat uh we're on wheeler lake uh what i try to find is the area where deep water comes up close to the bank. Now I'm nowhere near the channel, which really the main channel here, there ain't a main channel right here. It's all just, the whole river is a channel. Uh, but what I try to do is get as close to the deep water as I can. Uh, and that way I can kind of stagger my rods out, you know, in, in, the, in the depths. Uh, I got this one here, it's in about 30 foot. This one's in about 25. This one's in about 20, and I got this one in about 15. And the reason I, reason I got one up that shallow, uh, right here, I don't know if y'all can see it or not. I'll turn this camera. Oh, uh, you see all these rocks down through here and these trees and stuff. There's a lot of that stuff in the water, and uh, that's kind of, kind of what I'm interested in. I, I, I just feel, I just feel like it's a great place to catch a big flathead. Uh, and the time of the day is terrible. You know, it's about 11 o'clock. Uh, I got a late start today, but I couldn't go. Like I said, I couldn't fish with the area I wanted to. But I thought, man, instead of letting Mother Nature run my day and not just staying at the house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do a bank trip. So so here we are. I had done one a long time. I hope it works out. We've got good fresh skipjack, you know, or frozen fresh. Uh, I think I got two heads on and two body chunks. They, uh, like I said, I know we're in a good area. Uh, maybe maybe there's fish come through. We're just gonna sit here and see. I got a couple more spots like this, you know, down river that I can go check. Uh, but you know, one one thing about bank fishing, you got to be patient. And uh, today we're gonna be patient. We're gonna sit here, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. See what happens. If we don't get any bites, we'll move. If we get any bites, we'll stay. But uh, I said I know there's some big fish in there, and I caught one of the biggest flatheads ever caught in my life, just right there, 50 yards. Uh, Caught him on a jig fishing for bass at night one time. So I noticed some flathead around here and all these rocks and this wood and stuff. I just feel like it's a place to catch a big one. So if I can keep a snake from crawling in the boat with me, we'll be good. But we're going to sit here and uh, and give them a shot and maybe we'll catch us something. I always look for folks when I'm looking for a good place to, to bank fish. You see, that's just, just pea gravel. I just picked up a handful of it. But you see them shells? It's got shells in it, all different kinds. Uh, I mean, they're all in here. Well, shells like that and pea gravel, that spells bluegill and shellcracker to me all day long. Uh, and flatheads, you know, that's that's one, to my opinion, that's one of their uh, favorite species of bait to eat. And usually if you find bluegill, you're going to find, find flathead around them. Like I said, we may catch some blue. We may not catch nothing here. I have no idea. I've never fished right here. Not from the bank and never catch fish from the boat either. But uh like I said it's just a it's just one of them places that I just feel like it's a big one sitting down here uh waiting to eat. Uh if y'all notice why I'm looking around, I'm very observant, man, when I'm when I'm out, even on the boat, I know y'all notice I don't look into the camera a whole lot at all, but uh it's not that I'm shy, trust me, but I'm just very observant, like right here, I'm looking around this bank, you know, looking for snakes and just stuff like that. And even out on the middle of the river, I'm constantly looking around. And I reckon the reason I do that is because I fished around dams so long. And up around them dams, you have to keep your eyes and your head on a swivel. Uh, if you don't, somebody run over you. And uh, I fished up there for, you know, 25 years. And I've seen some bad, bad things happen and seen some things, bad, bad things almost happen. Uh, and then sometimes it was, you know, close calls with me. But uh, I just keep my head on a swivel. And uh, usually when I'm out, 
out of my element, you know, uh, out in the middle of the river or, or anything. I'm just constantly looking around. I don't know why, but, uh, but anyway, I think we can maybe pick up something here. I don't know if we'll catch any big ones or not. Like I said, I hadn't, I've never fished here. It looks real good. And I noticed some catfish here certain times of the year. I just don't know if they're here right now. And I don't know if they stack in here at any time. But I figured it'd be better once well, the water's five foot low right now. Uh, you know, once this water gets up above all this timber and over, over the top of all these rocks, you know, it'll be a lot better. Because uh, then it gives the fish a little more a little more water up closer to the bank. All right, folks, we're at spot number two. Uh, I only got that one bite up there uh, in that first spot. A boat floated off the bank. It had a little too much of a uh, angle on the on the rocks, and I didn't tie it up, so it floated off. I'd sit there about 30 minutes to get with that one bite, so I thought we'd go move anyway. Uh, there's some current down here. Oh, there you go. like a pretty decent fish right there folks. That's awesome man, I just throw them out. I ain't got the boat tied up to the got a big log right there in the front I was gonna tie it up to. Hadn't even got it tied up yet. He about pulled me off the bank. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a nice blue. I, I got him snagged in the butt. He bit from the wrong end. Don't y'all look here at that. Now that's a smart fish right there, folks. When they can when they can bite from the back end like it. No wonder I ain't been catching. Them old constellane hooks, folks. It'll get them from the back or the front. It don't make no difference. <laughs> there we go. That's the first bank fish. I figured they'd be something down here. There wasn't no current hitting that, that first spot I stopped at, but there's some current hitting this point. I got a point runs out right here. And this, this current comes straight down through here and hit. It's the first place it hits uh, this side of the river in this area. So I figured there'd be some fish here. But may not catch another one, but we got one anyway. He's holding some drag. We may have found us a little honey hole right here. He was pulling drag, but. I don't think he's much bigger than that other one. They're definitely on that point. I wish I could throw them all, throw them all down there, but I don't know if y'all see it, man. I got a bunch of trash coming through. I don't know where all this is coming from. Come on, buddy. I got a ledge, I gotta get him over. Yeah, he's a little better than that other He got it in the mouth. <laughs> he said that he'd rather have it in the mouth than the butt. That, that butt hook, I bet that hurt. Yeah, I might need to get my grippers on him. He's a little big if we pull him in by line. Nice fish right there. Definitely for a bank fish. Got mud all over. I guess when you're catching them from the bank though, they're gonna have some dirt on them. <laughs> there you go folks, nice. Nice bank blue cat right there. I wish I could throw them all in that spot, but there ain't no way without getting them all tangled up. Let me get him back. Man, 
Man, that thing's pretty in that clean water. Clear water, it ain't clean. I just throw that one back out there. Ain't been here 10 minutes, done got two. Maybe they start doing a little more with this bank fishing. I love it, man. Like I said, it's just something I don't get to do a lot of because, you know, generally if you got a boat and you can go fishing, you're going to take the boat. But, you know, our bank, our, like I said earlier, our bank uh, spots here with road access are so pressured, you know, you can't, you drive all the way down there and, you know, somebody's already set up, you know. And I don't crowd people. I'm not going to bother somebody that's already set up on the bank. One good thing about doing this kind of bank fishing, you, you're still mobile. You know, you can move around. And you're in places, you know, there's probably nobody ever pulled up on this bank right here and fished, you know. So you don't have any fishing pressure, you know. Don't have anybody bothering you. Well, let me get this other one baited up. And I'm going to throw it right back in the same spot. What I'm fishing right here, folks, is it comes off the bank here, drops off, and just gradually gets deeper, and then it drops off in a 35 foot of water. And where I'm throwing these is right off the drop. And there's a little point that comes out right here. Turn that camera and I'll show y'all. That little point right over there comes out, and where I'm casting is right out in front of that tree out there where it drops off in that deeper water. But the problem is I, I can't get more than rod, one rod in there because the current's strong enough right here it's pushing my lead and I don't want to put enough on there to hold it in, in place because if I do they're going to get hung. Oh, cause I got to get I got to get the fish over that ledge when I hang one. I was able to get two of them over there in that area. If I get bit there again I may try to swing my boat around and tie it up over here where I can get all three of them in that in that strike zone. So, if we ain't been here 10 minutes, that ain't got a nibble yet. And I moved that when I throw it over there. And I think I throw this first one a little too close to the bank. Uh, but that one right there is in the spot that it was in, if, it's, if it is. So, we're going to give it a few minutes, see if I get another bite there. And if I do, I'm going to swing my boat around while I can throw them all three out there. I got them three as close as I can get them together without them getting tangled up. Like I said, that current washes my baits till it hits that point and then they stop and that's where the fish are, are at so but I've got them there they're probably about eight or ten foot apart down there so maybe uh, I, everyone I, I can handle everything but the middle one if, if the middle one gets hit I'm probably gonna tangle one up but that's all right we can deal with it tell you what I enjoy this bank fishing man I ain't done this in a long time so uh, I've been wanting to do some some, some adventure stuff, you know, that's what my plan was when I started this was to bring me something, you know, to cook on and, you know, because a lot of these places, now you can only do it in the, uh, when our, when our lakes are down for winter pool, because everything is underwater, all this is underwater, uh, there's not really anywhere on the bank you can pull a boat in the, in the summertime, uh, and plus snakes are so bad, you know, that time of the year, uh, which I'm sure they're out today, with it being 70, 70 degrees, but. Uh, that's what my plan is, is is you know start doing some some stuff like this because man i love it i just love being out here but man it's so peaceful just to come out here you know when i'm sitting here like this i can take everything in you know enjoy god's creation you know uh versus being out there in the river you know i've got the trolling motor going got something i'm, I'm most time constantly moving uh just a lot to a lot to worry about and a lot to watch you know but here you know, fish from the bank, you know, you, you just, you gotta have patience for one thing, but you just sit here and enjoy it, man. You know, it ain't, ain't a lot of work in it. Uh, you know, you still got the task of loading and unloading the boat, but other than that, everything else is just peaceful. Pull a drag. Feels about the same size, it might be a little bigger. Got to get them up over that ledge.
Boy, that sure do hit hard. Nice blue key. About the size of that first one we caught. Healthy, I know that. Well, let's be friends now. Man, I tell you what, that sure is fun. Nice old blue kit. Out at 30 foot of water, he's burping like crazy. Man, I'm loving this, I'm telling you. And they keep giving me my bait back. I, I've, I've had the same bait uh, on that other, t on the rod. They give me my head back twice, and then that one gave me my body back. So these fish down here are pretty nice. <laughs> Ain't a whole lot left to hook it there, but I'm gonna use it because I just put it on there. See if I can get this one back out there in that. Oh, hoping we'll get a hold of one here shortly. We have to grab that net on. The only bites I've got is the the one against the the first bait that gets to the to the point where it stops right there. That's the one that's got hit every time. I got one on right here. One slammed it, man. I thought my was slammed it. I don't know how he didn't hook himself up. <clears throat> he may still be on there, but man, he took off. I'm talking about he had that thing bowed over. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he'll come back for it. I don't think he got it. I don't know how in the world he didn't get hooked up. All right, folks, I don't know if y'all can see it or not. The bunch of old crap done washed in here on me. You can see it right there. It's coming around the boat, starting to get in my line. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm fixing to roll up everything and try to move on the other side of this point. I don't know what's over there. I don't know if there's a bank over there for me to pull up on. This stuff keeps getting in my line. So I hate to move, man, because I know there's some fish here, and I feel like there's, there's some bigger fish here. Uh, that stuff's all over my line down there, and it's just going to... It's, it's coming down the river. I don't know where it come from, but uh, I guess the heavy rain we got last week, it must have flooded up somewhere else and washed all of it down out in the main river. But, uh, I'm gonna move down. I got a couple more spots down here. I don't know if it'll be like this one, but uh, I'm gonna set up on and see if I can find anything. I mean, I know they're set up on points, so that kind of gave me a clue to what to look for. But I'm gonna get these in and push off the bank, move on down, and we'll get set up again. All right, folks, <clears throat> I went down, down the river a little piece. I couldn't find anything set up like this was, so I just gave this a little bit, and it finally washed more up on the bank. The wind kind of shifted out of the northeast, so uh, I'm back where I was, but I kind of angled the boat a little bit so I can get, uh, I'm going to throw out four rods now instead of three. 
but I'm able to get those three on this side back kind of in, in the area they need to be in. So we're just going to sit right here. I hate to leave fish, you know, good fish biting. So uh, I had, but I had to get that, let that trash go on by the boat. It was hitting the boat and then going around the boat. So uh, maybe it's gone. It's gone for now. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can anyway. All right, folks, before I forget, oh, uh, I was dumping out my boxes in my little tackle box. Oh, uh, I'm going to show y'all these hooks. These are Constellane circle hooks. That's a 10 out right there. You get 50, 50 of them hooks right there for like 13 bucks. That is an awesome hook, strong. I've never had one to break. I've never had one to dull. They just, they're awesome hooks and, and cheap, you know, get them off of Amazon or just, you know, Google Constellane. Oh, uh, that's, that's, they're awesome. Hooks. That's all I use, man. Uh, you know, I don't try to uh, go cheap on everything. Unless I can. I mean, if you can buy something that's just as good as a, a expensive one, why not? Now these right here, these are 12 volt Constellane. Big old circle hook. And they're all set, just like the 10 Oh, uh, I think these here was like maybe a dollar or two more uh, for the 12 volt, And you get 40, 40 in that box right there. I mean, you can't beat that, man. You know, uh, if you buy 40, 40 hooks from some of these uh, big name companies, I mean, it, it costs you two or three dollars a piece, you know, for, for a hook, you know. Them right there have got good quality. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my reputation on them and I definitely wouldn't try to do what I do uh, on camera with a hook that don't work. But them hooks, that's all I've ever used uh, since I started this. You know, I started out with a, uh, Team, cat, team catfish hooks. You know, they're all good hooks. Don't get me wrong. Every one of them is great hooks. But for the money, uh, why you want to hang up a $3 hook and lose it when you can hang up uh, one that's less than 50 cents? I mean, it just don't make sense to me. But I just want to show you all that. You know, like I said, I ain't trying to sell nothing. I, constantly, I don't even know who who the owner is. I have no clue. Uh, they're not doing nothing for me. I just use their hooks. But I'll just pass that along because, you know, I try to save some people some money. A lot of times people, you know, just starting out in the catfish, they think you got to go buy uh, what this guy's catching them on. You know, what kind of rod and reels he's using, what kind of hooks he's using, uh, what kind of uh, demon dragon he's using. You know, I, I use stuff on float. Nothing wrong with them. If I lose them, I've lost 75 cents, not not five or six bucks. So, you know, but I thought I'd show y'all that. You know, may help some of y'all out on on uh, saving a little money. And like I said, they're they're awesome hooks. I don't use anything but constantly. All right, folks, that trash moved in there again on the top of me, so we moved up river about a quarter mile. I'm just kind of working my way back to the truck. Uh, I got these kind of scattered out down through here. This looks good, too. Uh, only difference is this ain't a, it don't have a point right here. I uh, couldn't find anything to duplicate what I, what I was doing over there. But this right here is the same depth of water. You know, it's in a little cut right here. Got a point up here, but I'm behind the point instead of above the point, so I don't know what difference that's going to make, but. Uh, looks like an awesome place for a flathead, man. So did that, that over there. Uh, but I never did catch one, but don't know uh, that if I couldn't stay there longer, I probably could have maybe. But uh, we're gonna set up right here. This is probably gonna be our last setup because that grass is so bad down there. But it's coming around this point, so it's leaving me a little opening right here. So maybe it'll give me time to to get a few more in the boat. So well, wasn't a lot going on at that other spot point too. So. We come back to this one. I guess I'm gonna try to fight this grass for a little while. Uh, like I said, this is the only place I found where the fish are grouped up, kind of. Uh, the other place, I probably didn't see any fish on the gravel. Uh, but this fish, this place right here, uh, I didn't even go over it with the gravel till I got ready to leave. Well, ago when I went down river, uh, there, there's some fish in here. I'm hoping we will get a hold of that big old flathead, man. These are the kind of banks that they like to run. You know, maybe later in the day when they, you know, when they come come out. But oh. maybe we can get us a few more. Maybe we can get us a big one. You never know.
He's a little guy. No, he come on. Got me hung up though. He's on there, but he's down below that leg. There you go. You got him over the line. Oh, that's another fish. That's a bigger fish right there. Got two on, folks. You're like a pretty decent fish right here. Yeah, he's a good fish. Real good fish. Real good fish. That's a net fish right there. seen how he's hooked yet. He's all in this grass. Hold another ball. Hold another ball game fighting these fish in this shallow. One foot, one foot of water. And he ain't happy either. I really wasn't expecting that. That's a good fish. Yeah, that's a nice blue right there. Oh, my God. That's a good one. That ain't good fish right there. All right, let me get this. Let me get this other one in. He's a, I think he's a small guy. I had to put this one down when I felt that one hit. <laughs> that old big one right there, man. Especially in this shallow water, you gotta get a hold of them fast because they'll they'll cut you off on that on that leg. Boy, you wasn't going nowhere. I don't know how long this little fish here has been on there because I had been getting a bite for a little while. I know. Uh, he's just pecking on it. But he may have been on there the whole time because when I actually hooked him, there wasn't a whole lot to him as far as the fight. Get my pliers on him. Old console ain't hooked done buried in his buried in his face. Mm. Alright folks, there's a little guy. Yeah, I don't know how long he's been on there. He didn't have much fight left in him. He got my my line tangled up. 
on that ledge. So he may have been swimming around with it for a little while. I'm gonna put my life jacket on. I gotta, I gotta go to church when I leave here. And uh, I'm gonna try to keep that slime off of me if I can. They, they know I'm a fisherman, but I still don't want to get the slime all over me if I can keep from it. Open your mouth, boy. He been sitting there the whole time, the whole time with his mouth open. And like, I reach down to get him, and he wants that food. Don't y'all look what a big old fat rascal that is. It's a nice, I don't know what he been eating, but he sure is fat. Well, I'm tickled to death for that, man. First bank trip in years. And come out here one like that. I was just thinking I was finna have to go because I didn't want to be late for church. I was like, man, they're gonna turn on Shores World before dark. And I got about an hour and a half before dark. But, well, them two hit at the same time. So, well, let me get him back. I'm gonna see if he needs to be burped. He's already been doing some burping, but. Keep an eye on these other rods now. If I get a bite, let me know. <laughs> if they hit like him, you don't have no trouble. You'll hear it. I think he done burp. Burp all he gonna burp, but I'm gonna check and make sure. He had a little bit in him. That's crazy having to burp him from the bank, but he coming out 35 foot of water, you know. Well, all right. Let me get this big boy back. May get us another one before I get out. I'll fix and roll everything up. That'll make you. All right, big boy. Appreciate you, man. There you go. Now you can go act a fool. Man, that's exciting right there, man. I wasn't sure if I was going to catch a good fish like that. But, uh, you know, if you catch 10 pounders, there's some 20, 30s, and maybe even some bigger in here. Oh. Like I said, I, it's not really. It's a hard place to fish. The fish are set up on the inside of this point. And you know, it drops off right there to 35 foot. The current comes down and hits that point and that's where the fish are set up. Well, if I, had to, I had to up my weight out. I started out with two ounces and they all kept washing into the same spot. So I swapped the two and a half. Well, now I'm only getting hit on the one that hits in that point because the other one are stopping they're not the current's not dragging them anymore but i didn't want a bunch of lines tangled up you know if them lines get close you're gonna have a mess matter of fact i thought that little fish got in that line until that big one big big one took off well, i'm gonna start getting some stuff together and uh, i'm gonna leave a couple rods out until i do and uh, maybe we can pick us up another one hey i'm tickled to death for that man oh that's it ain't Ain't too many times I've been able to, you know, sit on the bank and, and have a have a day like that, you know. I mean, I ain't caught a lot of fish, but I ain't had to work real hard for them either. You know, I'm sitting here, taking it easy, kick back. Got shade right here, sun's beaming, man. That sun's hot, but it's, it's behind the shade, behind the trees. So I'm tickled to death. Yeah, that gives, that gives me a little little more confidence in my bank game, you know, because I, I know a lot of places where I can do this uh, when the water's down. And uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of hard, you know, when you're in a boat to, to do this unless you got confidence because, you know, I could have went anywhere I wanted to this morning when I got here. Uh, like I said, I started 10 o'clock, a little late, really didn't know 
what to do and I got over there and the wind was just too bad to do anything. But, you know, just having a having a backup plan, you know, having a little confidence in something that you really enjoy doing. Oh, you know, it don't matter how hard the wind's blowing or which way it's blowing from, there's always a bank to fish. When the water's down, you know, when it comes up summer pool, it's not. Oh, not in my area, not a lot, not a lot. Oh, but you know, it just, oh. Knowing that you can catch some, some fish and some decent fish, you know, and like I said, I had never fished this right here from the bank. Now, I fished right out there one time uh, when it was current was real strong. That's how I know that current was hitting this bank. But far as fishing here from the bank, I never have. Uh, you can't walk here, of course. You know, it's not that far to the ramp, but it's a long walk and it's private land to get in here. But uh, like I said, just uh, finding something, something that you enjoy. Uh, to kind of add to what you got, you know, it, it means a lot. And like I said, because there's days I, you can't fish this lake, you know, there's there's days you can't fish none of the lakes in my area. But if the water's down, you know, you, you can go find a bank somewhere. And like I said, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but I just didn't have any confidence in it. But today I didn't have a whole lot of choice. Uh, you know, I could have went, I could have went anywhere and fished, but I didn't have no boat control. And, you know, y'all know how I feel about that, but, oh. Uh, I thought, well, I'll just go over there and check that bank where that current's hitting. And uh, like I said, I'm glad I did, man. It worked out. Caught them three real quick, and I ain't had a bite now in a long time. A couple of hours till them two. But uh, that's just that midday midday funk, is what I call it. But it's not just, I figure, feel like it'd be an awesome place right at, right at daylight. Uh, I wish I could stay in the dark, but I can't. Uh, but it's just one of them places where they come out of this deep water and move up here on this point to feed and that's why you're catching you know catching you know two or three at a time and then catch them two at the same time oh uh, that's a good thing you know once they raise this water up you know like i said i can't sit here on the bank but uh you know i can back off out there and, and there's a stretch down below this right here that's full of timber that's just where trees have washed in there and i know that's going to be an awesome flathead spot you know like i said that's what i was telling y'all earlier i'm very observant of my surroundings when I when I when I'm fishing and stuff, you know I'm always looking for something for another day or another time, and uh, and I found this spot when uh, I was out here a couple a couple months ago when the river was flooded, uh, the current was too strong to fish the main river, so I just come over here just looking around and I noticed this current all the way up through here. There's no no current, but it, when it come around the bend way up the river there, this was, was the first place it hit. And I thought, man, it's got to be some fish there. Well, I couldn't sit up and fish it the day that, that I came because the, the trash was in the river so bad. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't forget them spots. I always want, I always come back and check them. And, uh, like I said, I wouldn't never thought I could have caught them from the bank because I figured they would have been on out there on the drop off of that point. But they're actually in the bend of the point on the inside, inside edge of it. And, uh, but you know when they raise this water up, you know when it gets uh, on in the spring, you know fish start getting ready to spawn, you know it's gonna change everything. But uh, you know that, that they will set back up on these places. But uh, just one of them little jills you find, you know it's not a like I said it's not a lot of fish on it, but it's, it's definitely enough on it to make it, make it worth your while to come back and check it. We fishing get these up, and get out of here. Oh. Uh, had a, had a pretty good day, man. I enjoyed the crap out of this being out here on this bank. Uh, like I said, it's just relaxing to me to be able to sit here and, you know, catch a few fish. Uh, I wasn't fishing for big ones, but we did end up getting a decent one. Uh, that just put the icing on the cake. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching the video. I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'll see y'all then, and God bless you.